Hello and welcome to part 5 of the Valkyrie Sound tutorial on recreating the sounds of Alien Isolation. In this part we pick up where we left off, we've just added the engine hum sounds to the background of our scene, and now we're going to move on to create some randomly spawned sounds around the player. We're going to take the sounds we made in parts 2 and 3 and add them to a scene from the Modular Sci-Fi Season 2 pack by Jonathan Frederick. It's free to download on the Epic Marketplace and I'll put a link in the description below. And now, with our engine sound set up, we can head back to the third person character blueprint to create a function that will allow us to spawn sounds randomly around the player. This is going to be used for the phantom footsteps and for the thuds. So what we're going to do first of all is create a custom function that's going to allow us to set the minimum and maximum distances for where the spawn sounds are going to be. We're going to use the sound base arrays to access as many sounds as we want, that is the phantom footsteps and the thuds ones and we're going to apply attenuation settings to different arrays so that we can start making them behave differently depending on what type of sound they are. So on the left hand side, add a new function. Just click add new function, like this. I've called mine spawn local sound. So let's open this up. Now this might look a little bit daunting. There's a lot of wires going on here. This bit at the end here is just for debugging, so we don't need to put that bit in. So select the purple node. I'm going to add our inputs. So the first input is going to be a spawned sound. And that's the sound base. So remember, we got that by typing in sound base and then going for the object reference. Next, attenuation settings. So again, let's type in attenuation and it's the sound attenuation object reference that we want. And next, we have four floats x min and max and y min and max. I'm not going to add a z axis to the random location our sounds can spawn in. Most home systems operate on a flat plane left, right, front and back. Um, adding the z-axis might be more appropriate for VR, but this is just a little example of what we can do, and you can mess around with those settings yourself. We want to add in four random float in range nodes. And what we're going to do for this first one, it's going to be hooked up to the x-min and the x-max. Next one is hooked up to the x-min and the x-max as well. And these two, their mins are connected to the y's, and their maxes are connected to the y maxes. From the upper float of each pair, we're going to add a multiply by float, and the lower value we're going to make point we're going to make minus one. Then we're going to add in two more random float ranges, and hook the output from that multiply into the min, and the lower part of the pair, the return value is going to be plugged into the max of that random float in range. So for the phantom footsteps. I'm going to set the X and Y min to 250 and the maxes for both of those to 750. So this means the smallest value we can randomly pull is going to be minus 750 and the biggest is going to be 750. But we're going to ignore the space in a 250 unit ring around the player. Why am I separating out the X and Y values? Well, you might want the sounds to behave differently if the player is in a corridor or in a wide space. You might want to tighten the sounds to create a sense of claustrophobia, like the tunnels and the little um, vents inside Alien Isolation. Or you might want to expand the space a little bit bigger so we get a sense of a, a larger area. Next we're going to drag in a reference to the capsule component. So from the upper left here, click on that and drag it in. And out of that we're going to get world location. And this here is just a vector plus vector node. But what I've done is I've expanded the pins. So if I pull this off, vector plus vector and then right click and split pin, split pin. What that allows us to do is we can then input the X and Y values, but we don't need to add anything in for the Z value, which means it's going to be the same as the get world location Z value. So just as a test, you should be able to follow all of these lines back. The X ones should all link back to the X min and max, and the Y ones should all link back to the Y min and max. From the spawned sound input, if you drag out, I'm going to create a spawn sound attached node, which is this one here. And again, we also want to connect the execution. Get another reference to the capsule component and attach that to the component. Attach the x, y, and z coordinates that we've created over here with a random entries to the x, y, and z. Again, for that, just right click and split pins. Want to change the location type to keep world position. 
And what I've done here is I've created a random floating range node between 0.6 and 1, which allows me to randomly change the pitch on the sounds. You can do this in the sound queue as well if you like, but doing it in here in the function allows us to apply this pitch randomization without needing to go into every sound queue and adding a modulator node to each one. We also want to go from the attenuation settings. If you drag out from that pin and connect that one up to the attenuation settings here. And that's it for our function. Back in the event graph, we're going to set up our phantom footsteps. So drag in the get audio array for the phantom footsteps, just like this. You might need to compile this before you can edit it. With that selected, click on the little plus sign here. And that's going to allow us to add as many sounds as you want in the phantom footsteps category. So I only have one in here. So I've gone add and I've added in the alien fandom footstep 3 q From the node itself, if you drag out a last index node, add a random integer in the range node and plug that into the integer output there. So the min is going to be 0. This will randomize the selection of items in the array between 0 and the highest indexed value in the array. From the audio array from here, drag out and get a copy node and hook that up to the return value of the integer. From there, we're going to pull in our custom function. So spawn local sound, you can just drag that in if you like, or you can drag out and type. Next, we're going to drag in our spawn local sound node and hook the get output to the spawned sound input. For attenuation settings, we'll come back to in a moment. I've set the X min and Y min to 250 and the maxes to 750. And then from the output execution pin, I've added a delay node. And again, another random float in range. For this, I put it between the values of five and nine and a half. And I've hooked that up to the duration. From the output of the delay node, we're gonna run that back into the spawn local sound node. So we'll keep it looping around. And with the exception of the attenuation, that is everything we need for the phantom footstep. Now we'll do the same thing for the third. And you can basically copy and paste. It's the same sort of thing. You just need to swap out the phantom footstep array for the thirds one. These parts can stay the same. The attenuation, again, we're going to make that a little different for the thirds. The X and Y mins I've made 400, and the max is 2,500. And I've set slightly different float values for the random floating range node. The last thing that we need to do is, from our sequence, we might need to add another pin for this, but from the first one, we're going to pull that out and connect it to the delay node for the footsteps. And lastly, we're going to connect the next one to the delay node for the thuds. So compile and save. And next, we're going to set up our attenuation. So go back to the content browser. And we're going to go to the effects folder. And we right click, sounds and sound attenuation. So let's look at the Phantom Footsteps one first. I'm going to leave most things as they are, but I'm going to set the inner radius to 250 and the fall off distance to 750. That means at 250, the minimum distance of sounds is going to spawn in, remember. The footstep will sound as if it's at its loudest volume. And at 750, in any direction, the sound is going to be at its quietest. In between 250 and 750, the attenuation profile will fade the sound accordingly as it gets further away. So we can save that and close it. And then you can just copy and paste that and rename it Thuds. And again, very little to change. We're going to update the inner radius to 400 and change the fall off distance to 2,500. Again, they are the same settings that we used for the X and Y values earlier. Now, back in the third person character blueprint, if you go to our spawn local sound nodes, we want to select for the footsteps one. We want to select the phantom footsteps attenuation. And for the thirds one, we want to select, we want to select the thuds attenuation. And that's us now completely finished with the random spawning of sounds around the player. You can test this out and tweak it to your liking. So far we've used our engine hum from part 2 and we've used the phantom footstep from part 3. Next we're going to create a blueprint from a mesh and add the machine cue that we created in part 3 as well. And after that we'll set up a couple of audio volumes so we can apply some reverb which was going to add more depth oh, and realism to the scene. The flight recorder. That's it for part 5. Thanks for watching. And as always, take care. What? What?